Welcome to part two of our videos on blasting and underground mines. So we're here at our simulated coal face. Now a miner's day would consist of coming into the mine, performing his undercut if they were doing that operation. He would place his charges, tamp the holes, fire his shots. The time he fired his shots would be about a good time to take lunch. So he would retreat back, count how many shots went off, and then he would give it some time for the smoke and the dust to settle and clear. Upon returning to the area, he would check for any bad gases, bar down any loose rocks, start setting his timbers, and then loading out the coal that was just fired or the rock that was just fired. And so when we talked in our earlier video um, about the augers, the end of these are actually split. And that's what performs the cutting. The spiral portion is what carries all the cuttings back out of the hole. In normal operation, if you, if you were in a mine where you were able to stand up um, or kneel, a miner would have what was called a breastplate or a chest plate. And the end of these is actually pointed. And so the back of the bit, he could place in the center of his chest and use his weight to lean into it to help him cut. So we have a small, small hole started here. And again, he would be trying to put his weight into the back of this. And just this simple operation. He would drill as many holes as he needed, uh, depending on the height of the coal face or the width. In a hard rock mine, they would use a star bit. And so the augers aren't really good at cutting hard rock. And so they would place it against the face where they wanted the hole. One man would hold it, the other one would swing the hammer, and every time he'd hit, they would turn the bit one quarter turn. In modern mines, and even in the, uh, in the later days, everything was replaced with uh, pneumatic drills, um, some electric drills, and now, you know, especially in coal, you have what's called continuous miners or long wall miners. Um, that have pretty much replaced this operation entirely. They still do drill and place shots in hard rock mines or any areas where you need to um, need to go through hard rock. And so we've drilled our hole. In this hole here, we've already placed our charge in the back and we've tamped the hole. So our charge was placed in after the hole was drilled to our desired depth. We punctured the charge with the needle and then we took our cuttings off the floor, placed them back in the hole, and then used our tamp bar. Again, the end of this is brass or copper, and it has a notch in it here. And this notch fits over top of our needle. And so as we take our dirt, place it in the hole, hold our needle, and then we can use the tamp bar to tamp the hole. <clears throat> Once that's completed, we now have our needle left in the hole. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna very carefully remove this needle as not to knock any debris into the hole and block our rocket squib from getting back to the charge. So just gonna carefully pull this out. And again, now we have a hole from our face all the way back into our charge. So the miner is going to reach in our squib holder. We're going to take one rocket squib. We're going to place it in the hole. Now he would do this for every hole that he had so he'd be able to light all of his charges at the same time. <clears throat> Again, the rocket squib. Has a sulfur paper fuse and a small black powder charge, and it's gonna rock it back into that hole and ignite our main charge, which in this case is black powder. I'm gonna make sure that's sitting just right. So once everything was placed, he would make sure that everyone was out of the area. To double check that everyone was out, he would call fire in the hole, usually three times, kind of in every direction. So we're gonna call fire in the hole, fire in the hole, fire in the hole. We don't hear anyone, we don't see anyone. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our lamp, and we 
We ignited the back of our charge, so now we're going to retreat to our safe area. Now the fuses on these rocket squibs can vary in time, so we're going to make sure we give it plenty of time to know that it's gone off. I know I placed one charge. I heard one shot fire. Again, we're going to give the time for that smoke and all the dirt to clear and the dust to settle. We're going to come back in with our safety lamp and we're going to check for our bad gases. Now you can imagine this little bit of smoke isn't much, but if we had quite a few charges that were going off combined with the dust, be very hard to see. So once all this is settled, again, we're going to come in. We're going to remove the material that we just uh, loosened up in the shop. Um, after we've barred down and made sure the roof is all right, eliminated any other hazards, and set our timbers. So this was a successful shot. Um, I'd consider it a success. So if anyone has any other questions on this operation, any of the tools used, or you'd like to see other videos made on anything shown here today, uh, please let us know either on Facebook in the comments or a private message or on YouTube, leave, us, uh, leave it in the comments and we'll get back to you, get it answered, get another video made. Again, thank you everyone for the support. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, we have a lot more videos coming out shortly. Again, like comment, subscribe, share, anything we can do to get the word out and spread history. So thank you, everyone. Hope everyone has a great day. We'll see you in the next video.